Hey, welcome back. I'm here with some more Unreal 5.2 goodies. Again, I am currently using a preview build, as you can see, uh, that I built myself in Unreal Engine. Uh, as you can see, it's 5.2. One of the things uh, well, we're gonna look at in this video is the UMG view model. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I'm not familiar or I don't know how to use this or I'm still trying to figure out how it works and stuff like that. Uh, but I've noticed and I checked this in 5.1 um, in 5.2. Let me scroll down this little note right here. It says uh, it will be possible to create view models with blueprint in the future in future releases. I did check this. So in 5.1, you are not able to create a view model. Uh, you, well, you can create it, but you have to do it through uh, through C++. But I can confirm and I'm going to show you right now that you can build one uh, or create a view model within 5.2, which is good. So now we can all of us, we can try to learn how to use it. Those of us that don't know uh, C++ to activate it, uh, it's a plugin. So you go to edit and you go to plugins and then you type in UMG view model and you select that and you click it and you have to activate it. And then you have to actually restart. And if you haven't, if you haven't checked the, the first live stream I did, if you haven't noticed, this is new here. Um, I won't go go into that, but you can click edit and edit these plugins and also package it. UMG view model. Uh, let me read this. Use view models to handle events and maintain a manifest for value for variables in your UI. So I'm still trying to wrap my head and still trying to learn. I've been I've, I've just been looking at it for the past hour, still trying to wrap my head on what it does, but which it, it, it does kind of make sense. Uh, the it makes uh, it's I guess it's smart to uh, separate your user interface from uh, your 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 separate your your variables from your user interface and, and whatnot. So as you can see here, it says uh, user. You may have seen this before. So then the user inter the user interacts with the UI. It sends the update back the update back to bound variables. And these variables are in the view model. View model sends the update to back to the object. And the object sends changes to the variables and back to the uh, the view model. Updates the the bound variables using uh, field notify, and then back to the UMG widget, and then displays updated information to the user and whatnot. So that. I'm still trying to wrap my head about wrap my head around it, but let's just take a look. So after you after you enable that plugin, which you want to do, what, let's let's see what we're going to do. We are going to go to uh, blueprints and we're going to type in view model. And again, I tested this unless I, I'm I'm an idiot. Uh, this doesn't show up. So you go. You want to we want to create a view model base blueprint. So let's name this VM and let's call this health. Again, I'm still trying to wrap my head around this. So don't ask me yet. Don't, don't, don't ask me. Hopefully if I do, I can make a tutorial. All right. So now we have our view model uh, blueprint and you know what? Let's, uh, let's open this up. Okay. So as you can see, I guess you can you can put functions, macros, and stuff like that. I guess, I guess you can, I guess you can call this like a storage tank for variables, functions, and stuff like that. And let's put some variables in here. Let's name this health, current health, and let's make another one, max health. Let's compile this. And here's another little trick: if you click these three dots uh, where it says save on compile. You can choose never or always or only on success. All right, so we have our variables and I guess they're stored in this uh, view model. So we have that. Let's create a widget, user interface widget. Uh, let's call this hood, hood two. And so we're gonna use this and we're gonna display, it. let's just do, uh, let's just do this real quick get this down and dirty. Let's click this and we're going to display this widget. Or I guess we can. Nah, let's just display this widget through the level blueprint. Let's just do this real quick. 
So let's drag this off, create widget. Let's just do this real quick. We're gonna choose our widget, HUD2. I named it two so we can find it easy. Drag this off, add to viewport. And so let's open up this widget and just add, let's see, let's add a text box real quick. And let's play. Okay, so it says text box right there. Let's name that null. It's it's displaying null right there. Let's just make this big as hell. All right, so it's displaying null. Now that we're in our, our widget, let's try to bound this. And again, this is new for me. Uh, let's go to, we're in our widget. Let's go to window and let's go down. Uh, you'll need to activate it. So view model, click that and also view bindings. So right now I have it over here in the right side, the lower right. And you want to click view model and haha -ha, there. I just, I guess I made two. We have our view model. So let's, uh, you know what? Let me make a real change real, real quick. Cause I created one earlier. All right. So let's choose our view model. And you know what? Let's go into our variables and let's set them. Let's set this to, to current health, set that to 50 and maximum health. I don't know, 200. So we got that. Let's save that. So as you can see, when we updated our variables, let me just delete this and just re-import it because re-add that, see if. All right, so I re-added that. So I'm not sure if you need to do that to refresh it and you can see our variables right here. Now uh, we can go to, I guess, click bind. And also um, on here, before that, for a creation type, uh, a new instance of the view model will be created when the widget is created, okay? There's also global view model collection. The view, mo the view model exists and it is added to the MVVM system and it will, it will be fetched. I don't know what that is. Maybe you do. And property path. The view model will be fetched by evaluating a function or a property path. So again, don't know what that means. We also have advanced view model context ID, view mo uh, global view model identifier, view model property path, and create setter function. Let's see what that is. Gener generate a setter function for this view model, note always true when the creation type is manual. So you can also choose manual. This view model will be assigned later. Okay. Okay, so let's bind. I guess it uh, pop it. it Shows up twice here, and that looks like a function. So let's go here and choose current health. And it hasn't changed, and I noticed that it hasn't uh, updated. So I guess I'm not sure if this update is if this is a live update, but if we play we'll see it shows up right there. All right. And let's see if we do the simulate. Oh, let's see if we simulate. Yeah, it shows up if we simulate. All right. Now there's also a view binding and I'm still trying to wrap my head off of this. So you click this and you can choose uh, something from the widget. So let's, you know what, let's add another text or, or something. Yeah, let's add another text box. All right, that's not working. 
All right, so we have another text box. I don't know, let's anchor this to the center. And I don't know, let's move this over here. So we have this text box. Okay, so I'm getting the, this error because there's nothing in here. So if you remove this, compile, and you're good. So let's add uh, this text box here, select again. Again, I don't know what I'm doing, just showing this off. So here you can click, to, you can choose a binding. Let's choose the text and select. So this binding or variable, it's on this side. And the other way, as you can see, there's, you can show, you can choose the direction. So one way to view model, one way to widget. So I guess you can pass, this shows uh, the direction of the information is passing. So over here, I'm not even, I can't even begin to figure out what's going on here. Uh, you would think that you would take another binding over here and then it would uh, uh, push this information into this text here. But again, I'm still learning and I don't really understand this yet. But as you can see here, there's conversion functions. So you can convert things, keys. I don't think I have any functions. It looks like there's two functions. I don't think I have any functions. Oh, look at that, it just popped, now it's bigger. Uh, so conversions, you can convert as a uh, currency, date and stuff like that. Conversion functions, maybe you'll, un maybe you understand this uh, better text. Okay. So maybe you can change the information to text name and I don't know. <laughs> There's details over here. Let me select this, oh, look at that, this is a, you know what, let's uh, pop this out and make this bigger. All right, that's a lot better. Here we go. So MV, MVVM, whatever that is, I don't know what that is. Okay, so the source is, maybe I need to make another source. Um, but yeah, uh, as you can see, one way destination. Let me see if I two way. Okay, so yeah, it updates there. So you can make the changes here. One way, t one time to destination conversion, there's errors, enable, compile. Again, uh, we just have to, we'll just have to, you know, dig deeper in this, but I just wanted to let you guys know, show this to you guys. You can, uh, you can take a look for yourself. You can play around, you could play around, around with it yourself and, uh, let me know what you think. Uh, have you used this before? I mean, have you used this with C++ or you were, have you been waiting to have the blueprint uh, implementation so you could do it, uh, so it could be a lot easier? Uh, let me know. But you can also check out this video right here for another feature that I found. You guys take care.